Hello and welcome to this week's Nail the Numbers podcast. Thank you for joining me. Today we are going to talk about your chart of accounts. So let's jump straight in in just a second. My name is Kerry Post, although I am your host and the owner and founder of Abacus Business Solutions, where we help our clients to know, understand and trust their numbers. Okay, so the last couple of weeks, we have been talking about reports, we've been talking about our profit and loss statement, we've been talking about our balance sheet, we've been talking a lot about those real crunching numbers that make a difference to your business. So today I wanted to look at the chart of accounts. All of those accounts that go into the profit and loss, go into the balance sheet, now you've seen how important those reports are to you and to your business, Now you're probably thinking, well, how many accounts do I need? Like how many is too many? How many is not enough? And so I thought we would dive into that today and just kind of see, you know, help you to understand what that looks like for your business. And that at the end of the day, it comes down to two things. One, you need to have enough detail so that your tax professional can prepare your tax returns at the end of the year and be able to put the right totals in the right boxes according to the tax return. And secondly, um, having enough accounts where you as a business owner feel that you're getting a real idea as to where your money is going to. So if you don't have enough accounts, you might feel that, okay, well, these numbers are just too big and it doesn't really tell me very much. So that's what we're going to jump into today. So as you will recall, when we talked about our chart of accounts, we talked about how it's in different sections, like it is you know, a combination basically of your balance sheet and your profit and loss report. And then the different sections of the chart of accounts, some go on the balance sheet, some go on the P&L. So if you remember, we're talking about our assets, assets, talking about liabilities, talking about our revenues, and talking about our expenses and our equity. Those, those, those are the five sections that we're seeing between the balance sheet and the PL, and those are those same five sections that appear on your chart of accounts. So when it comes to the chart of accounts, you can think of like the Goldilocks principle that not too many, not too few but just the right amount. And you're probably thinking, well, Carrie, that really doesn't help me when I'm trying to figure out how many that I actually need. So this number is going to be unique to you and to your business. You are not going to have necessarily the same chart of accounts as another business. Now you can just use the standard set of chart of accounts that QuickBooks creates for you when you create the file, but you're going to find over time that you need different accounts, different accounts that give you the information that you need as a business owner. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. So you wanna make sure that the number is right for you. Now, I'm not suggesting that you have your million accounts and that your P&L is four pages long and just the thought of sitting down and reviewing that P&L just totally overwhelms you and that then puts you off looking at your P&L because you're like, okay, this is gonna take me three hours to go through this and look at every single line item. So you don't wanna have a four page P&L. That's gonna be overwhelming, it's too much that's too much detail that is not going to help you make those informed financial decisions. That's my phrase of the, uh, that I always enjoy sharing because that's what everything comes down to, being, make, being able to make informed financial decisions. So let's talk about, so we've got our assets, so your bank accounts. So depending on how many bank accounts you have set up is how many accounts you're going to need on your uh, chart of accounts. Like I've shared before, for us, we have, I think we're up to 15 bank accounts now. We follow the profit first method, and then we have lots of different additional bank accounts in those five key bank accounts that they talk about. And so we have those additional ones because we tell every single dollar of our money where it's being spent and what its purpose is for. So that's going to depend on how many bank accounts you have. So on my p and I have 15 bank accounts. You're going to have one account, receivable account, and then equipment account. Again, it depends. If you've got five trucks, you should ideally have a line item for each individual truck. Uh, If you've got um, property or you've trailers, whatever it might be, ideally you want to have a line item for each individual one. Liabilities. Again, this is going to be out of your control. If you've got five five loans, you're going to have five lines, one line for each, one account for each loan that you have. So again, that is just decided for you. Credit cards, if you have three credit cards, you're gonna have three credit card accounts showing on your chart of accounts. If you've got 10, which I hope you don't, but if you do, then you're gonna have 10. That's how you're gonna break that down. And then you'll have your accounts payable that's going to show you uh, who uh, you owe. Your equity equity accounts, you're gonna have your owner's equity account and your retained earnings. You might have a couple of other ones there as well. That's a conversation to have with your tax professional. 
And then when it comes to your revenue, so this is how your revenue, your sales are going to be broken down onto your PL. So if you have just one line item sales and your number sits in there and that's enough information for you, then great. If it's not broken, don't fix it. But if when you're looking at that, if you're like, you know what, I'd really like to see the difference between our residential sales and our commercial sales, then have those two line items broken out. So you've got sales, underneath that you have commercial, then underneath that you have um, residential. Maybe you've got fire areas, maybe you do plumbing and electrical and HVAC, and you want to be able to track the revenue for each of those different areas, then sp split it up like that. Again, you want to have enough detail that is giving you enough information to help you see how your business is performing. Don't go and have 10 sales accounts just for the sake of having 10 sales accounts. If it's not going to give you information, it's going to help you to grow your company. If it's not going to help you to make a decision on something, then don't waste you know, your time or you know, your bookkeeping, time, bookkeeping team's time by splitting up everything into 10 different accounts if it's not going to give you information. So don't feel you have to have it broken down. Again, you have it down into the level of detail that you need as the business owner. And that's what it comes down to. Then expenses. So that's normally going to be your biggest section uh, in your chart of accounts. And you are going to have your direct costs, indirect costs, and your, all your overhead. So your direct costs are normally going to go under your cost of good sale and they get cost of goods sold. And again, it's the level of detail that you need as a business owner. So don't get all you know, detailed for no reason. You may want to have your materials separated out. You may want to have your subcontractors separated out. You may want to have equipment rentals se separated out. Again, it's information that you can use to see how your business is performing, what's working, what's not working, what needs to be changed, what's not happening. So that's what that is all going to come down to. So again, have enough detail that it makes sense for you to have that. But don't go so over the top that it takes your team so long to try and put that together. But also it takes you so long to try and read through the whole report and for it to actually you know, make sense. You don't want a report that's going to put you off reading it because it's just too much for you. And then when it comes to your overhead expenses. So this is where it comes down to what do you as a business owner want to see? Like we said, we want to have enough broken out. You don't want your advertising mixed up with your office supplies. You wanna have that broken out into your two separate accounts. But under advertising, you might wanna have your Facebook advertising. You might wanna have billboards if you do billboards. Uh, if you do radio advertising, you might wanna have radio. It's that kind of detail, again, that can give you as the business owner useful information to be able to see how your business is performing. So when you're looking at your PL, you see your advertising, you see the different, say, five areas where you advertise, and you can see how much you're spending on each month. And then hopefully you're tracking all of that to see what your return on investment is for all of those um, expenses on your advertising. Again, utilities, you might want to have just one line item for ut utilities. Or you might decide, you know what, I really want to see my internet expense broken out from my electric bill um, for the warehouse um, to the, um, the gas bill if you have your um, you know, gas in your building for whatever reason. So again, the level of detail that you need as a business owner. If you don't care the difference between your cost of internet and electric, then don't break it out. Leave it as one line of utilities. But have enough detail that you can see how things are going. Because if you suddenly start saying, how much is our electric bill last month? Then that's normally a pretty good reason. Let's line item that out. Let's separate that out from the rest of the utilities and have that broken out accordingly. Payroll, you want to make sure you have that broken out. So if you've got your know, superintendents and then you've got hourly labor, maybe you've got office the admin, that's good to have that broken out. So again, you can see how much expense you have in the field on your field labor, how much you have um, expense in your office labor. And then if you are taking payroll as an S Corp or C Corp, then you want to make sure you have your line item payroll separated out from everybody else's as well. So there are certain areas where you need to have it broken out. And if you're working with a professional bookkeeper, then they will know what those areas look like. Uh, if you're not sure what you need, then just um, reach out. So like I said, so how many is too many? If it overwhelms you to look at your PL, if it, you just dread looking at that report because it's three pages long and it's just too much information, then that's too many. Really go through, look at every single line item. It's like, okay, what is important for you to see separated out and what can be lumped with others? Now, again, you don't want to put advertising with office supplies. There are certain ones you need to keep separated. But there is a certain level of detail that you can have you know, that helps you and then detail that's just overkill. 
So you want to make sure you periodically review your chart of accounts. So you know, make sure it still aligns with your business, what you're looking for. Have you taken on additional expense that maybe didn't get its own line item that you want to be able to see? Hey, how much are we actually spending on this each month? Then it's you know it's time to change it. So as your business grows and evolves, that's when your chart of accounts is going to grow and change with you as well. If you can, you know, consolidate when possible. Like I said, don't go over the top with too many accounts. Consolidate if you can. Don't have lots of minor expense accounts, you know, with $10 here and $15 here. Think how you can group those up, that it makes sense if there's similar um, expenses. If you're not sure how to do any of this, if I had just totally overwhelmed you and thinking, well, I'm not sure, you know, I don't know what ones I need to keep, which ones I need to get, then reach out. You know, we can help you if you have, um, you know, accountant or a bookkeeper that you're working with, then talk to them. They should be able to help you as well. But reach out to us as well. You can go to our website, uh, constructionprofitfirst.com, fill out the contact page, and I will reach out to you. And then you can leverage the technology. So if you're using QuickBooks online, you know, you can help that to you know, use, um, you know, the technology there to help you be consistent in those accounts that you're using as well. It's really easy to go through, look at the chart of accounts, see what you have, what do you need to change, what do you need to consolidate, and then you can also set up different rules to make sure that, okay, this expense always goes to, um, to this category. So I hope that did help you. So it, it really is a really important element of your business. It's the basis of those accounts, those reports that you're looking at, and you want to make sure that you've got that balance of enough detail, but not over the top that it puts you off from reading your P&L. So if you have any questions on this, please reach out to me. You can message me direct um, through any of our social media channels, uh, or you can go to our website, constructionprofitfirst.com, and send me a message on there as well. And we can set up a time to chat on Zoom and just see if there's something that we can do to support you. There's no high pressure sales here. That's not me. Let's just, you know, if you're needing help, let's see if we're a good fit uh, and see how we can help you to know, understand, and trust your numbers. Well, thanks for listening to this episode of Nail the Numbers. Thanks for watching if you've been on LinkedIn, Facebook, or YouTube. And don't forget, you can also catch us on Spotify later this week when this episode will be uploaded as well. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time.